shocking medical facts and statistics from the Civil War, amputations, anesthesia, and disease control. Chloroform and Ether Over 80,000 operations using chloroform were reported by Confederate medical officers alone. Ether was more volatile and less used but equally impactful. Chloroform was discovered independently by three scientists, American physician Samuel Guthrie, French chemist Eugene Subirin, and American physician James Young Simpson, in 1831. Its initial use was quite varied, from a treatment for asthma to an anesthetic. By the mid-19th century, its anesthetic properties became widely recognized. Chloroform works by depressing the central nervous system, specifically inhibiting the activity of the cerebral cortex. It interferes with the neuronal signaling processes, leading to a loss of consciousness and sensation. Its rapid onset and the ability to produce deep anesthesia without irritating the respiratory tract made it popular, especially during the Civil War for surgical procedures. However, the narrow therapeutic index and risk of fatal cardiac arrhythmias have since led to its decline in medical use. Gangrene Management Around 30,000 amputations were carried out by Union surgeons, largely to mitigate the spread of gangrene. Amputations were a common surgical procedure during the Civil War, mainly because of the lack of advanced medical treatments and the high incidence of extremity wounds. Surgeons at the time used amputation as a radical but effective method to prevent the spread of gangrene, a condition where tissue dies due to a lack of blood supply and becomes infected. Gangrene is especially dangerous because it can spread rapidly, causing systemic infection and potentially leading to death. By removing the damaged or dead tissue, surgeons could stop the advance of gangrene and reduce the risk of systemic infection, increasing the chances of survival. Although amputations were drastic, the intervention was often a life-saving measure in an era without antibiotics or advanced wound care. Embalmers Embalming became a business during the Civil War, with embalmers charging up to $100 for officers and $50 for enlisted men. Embalmers often followed armies or set up near large military hospitals to offer their services. They would obtain permission from military authorities to operate within army camps or nearby. Advertising was another method employed by embalmers to get clients. Word of mouth was also powerful. Officers or medical personnel might recommend an embalmer's services to a grieving family. Families who could afford the service would contact embalmers directly to ensure their deceased loved ones were preserved for the journey home. In some cases, embalmers would embalm notable figures as a demonstration of their skill, garnering them more attention and potential clients. Phantom Limb Syndrome Silas Weir Mitchell, a U.S. Army contract surgeon, first medically documented this phenomenon among MPDs. Railway Spine The term was first coined by John Eric Erickson in 1867 to describe post-traumatic symptoms in veterans. Sanitary Commission This organization managed to reduce the rate of dysentery and other diseases from 12.7% in 1861 to 8.2% by the end of the war. Pavilion-style hospitals Dr. Jonathan Letterman's design was implemented in several Union hospitals, notably Jarvis Hospital in Baltimore. Quinine for malaria 29 million quinine pills were consumed annually by Union troops during the latter part of the war. Where to find more information? Civil War Medicine, Challenges and Triumphs by Alfred J. Bolet.